Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk with an illustrator located here in Madison who mainly works with pen, ink, and paper. And I've actually spoken with the person a few times over the years, just personally. I've met them in different places. They work at a coffee shop that I go to that's here in town. And we finally get together to talk about kind of how they started their illustration path or at least the current one that they have. They've always been an artist, but never really pursued doing anything publicly with it. And we talk a bit how that began, how uh, they actually got involved in more markets and just meeting different people and producing work for different places in town. We talk all about that and more on this episode of the podcast starting right now. My name is uh, Casey uh, Hobart. I am a uh, illustrator, uh, pen and ink, a lot of cross hatching. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> I, and you do. First of all, you're based here in Madison. Correct. That's where I've met you. Now, there's some things. While I was, of course, I like to make sure I know about the people when I'm talking to them. So I look them up. Even though you and I have talked in public, I mean, we've had conversations, but it doesn't know. It doesn't mean that I know your background. But one thing I noticed: you went to La Follette. Yes. I went to La Follette. I, when did you go to La Follette? <laughs> actually, I think we have talked about this. I think we are exactly 10 years apart. Okay. All right. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. I think it yeah. might've come up the one. So I went to, I went to Mother Fools and you were there. I was there to meet somebody for an interview and they didn't show up. And then uh, you were at the counter and you and I were just talking. You, you had heard the podcast and you were mm -hmm. repairing a civil war uh, or some sort of like old army uniform on <laughs> while well, you're at mother oh, yeah. fools <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah i i do uh civil War era like uh living histories and such um so yeah it's probably either repent mending a like a hole in the uniform or or the all too common uh button that constantly gets lost in an event <laughs> yeah it, yeah <clears throat> so it's um it's just kind of cool because like i do um like i said with the uh civil war stuff i um lend my I, I like to say think i kind of lean myself more towards like the more authentic side so when i'm like repairing the uniforms i try to do it how you know from documentation how they would have done it yeah. so it's kind of so when your uniform gets a little bit more ratty and tattered as long as it's not complete rags it's you know trying to mend it the way they would have done it so it's a you know, yeah. level of nerdiness yeah so <laughs> you weren't using like a modern sewing machine you were doing it by hand when we were sitting right. there i'll tell you this though it's it's an interest interesting like conversation uh add-on i guess i would say it's like sitting around a campfire i we sat there and talked for like a good half hour and all i did was sit there and watch you mending this thing but we continued to have a conversation <laughs> it was just like staring at you working on this this uniform, it was, it was a very interesting, <laughs> it, it was a delightful thing, uh, for a, uh, me sitting there waiting for somebody who never showed up. It was a delightful thing to do. So yeah. <laughs> it was kind of fun. <laughs> cool. And I will say that some of your drawings that you have, especially around that time, cause I think it was around 2017 when, uh, when it happened, when you and I first talked, uh, a lot of your drawings from then actually have civil war themes in them or like so soldiers themes, like people sitting together. And I noticed that in some of the drawings you do is that, is, so you've been inspired by that. Yeah. Um, it's funny you should mention some 2017. Cause that's when I really, so, um, that's kind of when I really, I guess I never really stopped doing art. I just never really finished anything. Okay. So it's like, um, yeah. So I uh, was started doing just like just illustrations of uh, like different uh, soldiers around of them all uh, mostly like I would modernly refer to as the Midwest, but was Western soldiers at the time. A lot okay. of Wisconsin, Illinois, um, and I actually started doing um, because of my art background. I started doing like a, like a handout for my uh, living history group that uh like list of events and such like that i was like oh i want to make this look like a like a period like um recruitment poster or something like that mm -hmm. and i was like, so that kind of inspired me to do like an illustration of uh well the group at the time was the uh company k of the second wisconsin was our main portrayal so i did this iron brigade soldier on 
And I, I was like, it's kind of nice getting stuff done. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so I uh, started kind of, so from there I started doing like just mostly just single soldier um, illustrations. And then from there I started kind of expanding because I was a big fan of like the, I really liked the illustrations of um, the, like the, the period newspapers, like your Harper's Weekly or Leslie Illustrated News. Oh, right. So, so yeah. So some of my later illustrations, I started doing kind of stuff like that, where you have like this big, nice, like ornamented, like outline, like almost a framing thing that they would use to kind of catch the eye. And I was, I, that kind of what got me into kind of re got me into like just actually finishing stuff. Yeah. And that, yeah, I want to say it was around 2017. And then I kind of, from there, I started setting goals. Like, okay, I want to do this amount of, or try to get this done. And so I just kind of started adding up and up and up. So, yeah. And you went to school for art. So why had you not, not that you hadn't done anything with it, but from what you're saying now, it's like you weren't really putting things out there. Like what, wh- why weren't you publicly putting things out at this point or before this? Or finishing them, as you said. You said you just weren't finishing things. Why? Why was that? That's a good question. I, I, not a hundred percent sure. I mean, there was like a, like again, I was just a lot of when I say working on stuff, it's a lot of just like sketching and stuff like doodling and whatever. Um, if you were, I think there there was like a kind of a moment where I did actually have a job that kind of catered towards that creative outlet. Okay. So I was able to kind of do stuff on that and. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a, I'm not really sure. It's just, it's just one of those things that I kind of got into like a, a slump of sorts, just kind of got into the routine Yeah, as it were. Um, there was, but uh, there were like moments like uh, I work, I uh, volunteered like a, at a, a, a community art center down when I was living in Chicago for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, that allotted me like a creative outlet I did some graphic design for them. I helped teach a, uh, a, a like a like an all ages illustration class. Okay. Um, and then uh, when I after moving back to Madison, I just kind of again just kind of it seemed like my focus has got kind of spread out. And then uh, I did I did like I said I did have like some creative outlets. Um, I did work at a uh, I did help uh, build sets at a at a uh, photo studio for a little bit. Oh really? Like scale. Yeah. What does that entail? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> like that? I picture you like putting the, like Christmas morning putting together the toys is the first thing that popped into my head. Were you building sets like that, or you were just like going, "Here's the you know you do the window shade pull and like that's the background type thing and setting up the lights." Like what? Is, <laughs> what are the sets that you would build? <laughs> um, they were uh, basically scale uh, sets. Um, for uh, 18 inch uh, size dolls. No so way. Just, oh, I see. Yeah. You lit. Okay. You yeah. were doing what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. T- keep going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, no, it was like, um, so um, yeah, it was just like uh, taking like different, uh, in some cases, uh, some very uh, various like found objects, sometimes repurposing them into uh, different things like uh I made like a telephone pole using like old stir sticks and for like the kind of like glass insulators, I was using like clear thumbtacks Nice. where if it's like far, far enough back, you don't really, it doesn't register as like thumbtacks and just yeah. kind of details like that. Um, it was a really nice, it was a really fun gig. Um, my friend who was also my, uh, basically my boss superior or whatever, um, they really instilled upon me, which kind of, also later would translate into my <laughs> I don't neighbors know complaining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, kids. Um, but uh, no, um, what, what kind of caters to like some of my illustration work too is um, when it came to like building the sets and stuff like that, my friend uh, really instilled upon me like different things that you would um, incorporate into the backgrounds mm-hmm. that like you normal people or a lot of people wouldn't really think to put in but everyone's going to feel like something's off if it's not there. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, was, like, well, were these for, were these for promotional things or it was just like, this is the style of thing that I'm like, was it an art piece where this is the thing that I'm doing? Like, what was the purpose for them? Oh, for um, the sets for the photos. It was a, uh, it was a promotional. Um, okay. Uh, it was a promotion for like a local company. Like they, uh, well, 
used to be local company. <laughs> right. Um, but actually, um, um, actually one of the people that uh, were on your show earlier, we worked for the same place, but not at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious yeah. what the, uh, what the, uh, what would it be the, the classified listing for a job like that? Need someone to make small, tiny sets look like real <laughs> landscapes or like, you know, I'm curious, like how, how, what made you go like, Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> if um, you remember, I don't know if you would. Yeah. I actually, no, I was, I was actually approached by my friend about uh, applying for it. Cause I just needed an assistant. Uh, my title was assistant set builder. Okay. So I just need, and uh, they knew my background art wise and brought me on. And it was, I was only doing it for like, a, I want to say like maybe like a year. And it was okay. a lot of fun when I did it, it but it was just, um, so, but yeah, they brought me on. Um, yeah, and it's it's a very niche, especially like that scale. Right. So <laughs> anyway, okay, yeah. So, all right, so enough about yeah. that. That's not even what you <laughs> no, do anymore. Uh, I was just fascinated <laughs> by that. And it's, so most of the stuff that you're mainly what you work in is you work with uh, paper and ink, correct? Yes. Okay, because that, that's what I was looking at. I'm like, yeah, this is all this is all just hand paper and ink. And uh, I wanted to get more into, so uh, 2017, uh, as you were talking about how you first were like, oh, I'm going to start putting this stuff out there. It's weird because that's actually when I did it. So I totally get when you were saying like, (laughs) I don't know why I didn't finish anything. I mean, I always considered myself uh, an artist, like I would draw things and I could draw stuff and do cartoons, but I never put anything out. Or I mean, I would, but I do like one thing and then like not do the thing again for like years and years and years. And then didn't really start doing it till around the same time you did. So it's funny because I was, as you were saying that, I'm like, oh what would my answer be to that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just finally one day was like, why do I keep saying I'm going to do this? And then I never do. So what would happen if I tried sort of thing? Mm -hmm. And that would, that was, I mean, that's yeah. So while you were saying that, I'm like, yeah, I, it it is hard to explain. Like what made me finally go like, this is the one, this is when I'm going to start doing it. So, and, and Mm -hmm. you were doing that. And when you put them out, were you putting them out on a website? Were you selling them? Were you hanging them up? Like what was your, what was your pre now you've got them. Now you decided I'm going to show people what was your method mm-hmm. in going in starting up and like going, okay, now I'm going to share these with the world. How did you go about that? Um, it was a mix of things like, uh, at the time, I think what kind of led up to it was a, um, I'd started like accumulating like a, you know, a body of work and just kind of, of illustrations. And I started, you know, it's like this, as well, you know, I was while well, working at mother fools. I just kind of looked at the walls. Like, I think I could put enough stuff up here. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, it, it was just a, um, so I contacted, uh, you know, I talked to the owners and, um, and yeah, and just, made, and they were, all four, because they always, which is, I always been super appreciative. They're always really for like, you know, supporting, promoting different artists. And oh, yeah. that kind of what I was just like, yeah, you know, just try doing this. And then, so when I got the confirmation, I was going to do a show there. Or I think it was sort of in April of 2018. Mm-hmm. I also started trying to use that as like, okay. So when I started doing, putting together like a, I think I uh, did like the Facebook page I actually got on Instagram and just kind of stuff like that. I haven't really t- completely dived into like just doing like digital like sales and stuff like that. Just because I, 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 I know me and I really want to be like super on top of like organization to have like a proper inventory and stuff like that. Cause I've, I'm worried I've seen this, you know, back to like the living history stuff. I've seen too many, uh, uh, different proprietors of like of really interesting garments and stuff like that mm-hmm. get get a thing that they're really good at, so they start selling a bunch of it to the point where they can't keep up with it. Yeah, I don't say I don't think that's going to be a thing that will happen to me. I'm just more of a thing where it's just like I want to make sure I can keep up with everything, make sure everything's shipped on like a timely basis, and that's just kind of something I want to make sure I'm like thoroughly organized to do before oh, I, I can't really. Saying. Yeah. So, and it's just kind of a, so right now, usually when I decide to go, when I'll do stuff, it's, I like to do very much in person. I'll go, um, I've done now a couple of the, uh, like the Black Friday, like makers markets and a couple different like craft fairs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, 
participated uh, this just this last May. It was my first time participating in the uh, the uh, Marquette Atwood Neighborhood Art Walk, okay. which I thought was again a lot of fun. But I I like act like you know I find myself in in general preferring like actual you know people first in a person interaction versus like say over the phone and stuff like that. And so yeah, so, <laughs> it's. When you started uh, putting these together, and and I totally mm-hmm. get the inventory thing. Like, I, yeah, the print on demand thing. Sometimes I'm like, it's going to take them that long to make it and ship it out. It's like I could do that, and you know, but have, having ship someone who ships things every day. I'm just like, why why is that taking so long? I mean, I get it. I mean, the print on demand, the order has to go through. It goes through the assembly line and all that uh, for the print, but it's just like, come on. It's three, a lot of the times I say it's going to be like three weeks and that makes it look like it's you that's saying that it's going to, it's going to be three weeks. And I get that mm-hmm. completely. Um, but so you were, you were building this inventory of your own stuff. One, how do you go about, uh, let's, let's start from the beginning. I, I have several questions here and I'm trying to organize them in my head because I'm very interested uh, in this because for me, I'll draw things and, I'd be like, no one wants that. I like it, but I, you know, whatever it's, I mean, even when I put out the comic, I feel bad, like putting together a whole book of it and going here, you can read that. And it's just like, nah, that's just me. That's my own hang up. Uh, but, <laughs> but when you, when you start a piece, um, how do you go, uh, how do you go about saying like, okay, here's the idea I want to draw and I'm going to turn this into something. Like what's your process in, when you decide to create a piece? What, what, what do you, what makes you go like, all right, this is, this is what I want to draw and I'm going to turn this into something. I feel like that's a broad um, question, but please be as broad and extended no, it, it, on it, as you it, want. It, yeah, it, Absolutely. No, it's, it's actually, it's broad, but I, I love it because yeah. there, there is like a, a definitely a, uh, you know, to, you know, channel some cliches and method to my madness if you mm-hmm. will but like um for example like uh i draw a lot of like inspiration from different things um you probably saw um i've done a lot of illustrations so I, that literally were gifts for my wife for like anniversaries christmas stuff okay. like that i find like my own family to be like a quick inspiration like they always like to draw because my kids are quirky hesitant pause no i get you yeah <laughs> no they're they're wonderful but uh it's like sometimes there'll be like a case where it's uh, i'll just be doing like an illustration that i want used for, you know like to i'll do a lot of stuff for like my family um and then sometimes i will literally just be kind of doodling and something will kind of come together without it's like i, I always carry uh I have like a big old uh, chrome uh, backpack that I have. Like, um, oh. I always have like Bristol boards, all my art stuff, and I'll take it with me to work. And again, another shout out to that thing that some other fools great thing is that if it's slow and I'm up to, and I'm up to speed with all my stuff at work, yeah, um, the owners are really cool with me, just like working on my artwork, which is great. Yeah. Um, it's but they um. But yeah, no, you know, so sometimes there'll be some rant, some stuff where it's just literally be like, I'm, I don't know, I'm going to draw some person with random facial hair on a penny farthing bike. And it's like, oh, hey, this is kind of neat. And it's kind of, I'll go into more details. And then from there, I'll transfer it on to like, I'll look at it and just kind of more refine it on Bristol board and then so on and so forth. So and you'll some recreate stuff. it. You'll actually go like, here's a thumbnail sketch. And then you'll go over and go draw it again on a larger scale. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's interesting too, because like how it, I always found it fascinating how stuff sometimes changes. Mm-hmm. Like there will be some cases where it'll have it'll have like a a lot more fluidness to it, but a lot not a sketchier, kind of very loose. Versus like when I and then when I go to refine it, it doesn't it doesn't retain like that fluidness, but it creates something different to it. There's like a more like order to it, if you will. Yeah, and like. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so that sometimes we'll do that. Sometimes it's uh, just a case of um, like I've done a couple of t-shirt designs for uh, B-side records. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll, I'll realize because then that you know, speaking of things that I actually got done, um, I think the first t-shirt I ever did for them was for their thirtieth anniversary. Thirty fifth, Steve. 
Well, actually, the first one I did was the 30th. Oh, darn. Shoot. I, here I thought I was like, ah, I did my background check on you, and you probably did another <laughs> yeah. one on the 35th. Well, I did so a never 35th. Mind. So, yes, you're not wrong. <laughs> I will, I, I will I, like I, to I, interject I, once, though, it, it, yeah, before you finish this story. Actually, it's funny that uh, you connected with me and we could do the show because my wife went, we went to check out the newbie side because they had just recently moved on State Street. Mm-hmm. And we walked in and she went there to go buy a shirt because she brought the wrong size. And I'm sitting there looking at the shirts that she's choosing from. And I'm like, wait a minute, that looks like Casey's artwork. <laughs> and I literally, I looked at it and I was like, that looks, and she's like, who's that? And I'm like, that's that guy that I met at Mother Fools that I told you about. Uh, who was an artist there and, you know, and all this. And I was like, that looks like his stuff. And I got up closer and it was yours. So I recognized your stuff is basically what I'm saying. Like, all I did was I saw a drawing and I'm like, that looks like his stuff. So anyway, I wanted to let you know that. (laughs) All right. Continue your story. You did the 30, (laughs) the 30 year. (laughs) Yeah. The 30 year. And uh, um, Steve actually uh, asked me about it uh, because he knew I I did like illustrations and stuff like that um, prior to getting back into it. And just because I, shop there all the time and he asked like want to do a shirt and I was like absolutely yeah and I, yeah so it just kind of <clears throat> so you know, i'll get stuff like sometimes yeah when like another anniversary will come up i always just like i'll just you know, work on something and see if steve is interested yeah and it's just because I, I basically just kind of like to do stuff like that for like friends um and then uh with like the civil war stuff a lot of times it will come back to um Sometimes I'll just do it when I, it's getting closer to like a uh, like a larger event that I know I'm going to be going to. Like I was okay. supposed to go to an event down out in Gettysburg last July, and there the event was portraying the first Minnesota, and I was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done that one. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what inspired me to kind of sketch out and start doing like a stuff for uh, <clears throat> for that. Um, and uh, trying to think about like, and again, sometimes. It's interesting because there was uh, one illustration I did, I think probably back in like either uh, 2017 or 2018. Yeah. That literally just started out with like a sketch where I was, I just kind of drew like a character. I was like, oh, this is a cool, interesting pose. Just kind of playing around that. And then I kind of, it's like, oh, it's it'd be kind of cool to have a background to it. And then I literally like looked, I was at, I was at, uh, mother fools and i looked across the street looked at the house across the street and took all the things on that house and just kind of flipped it okay. so i so when people ask me like stuff that i illustrate i go you know i do like the civil war stuff and i do what the more con- like contemporary scene stuff i like to describe as like madison or like midwest inspired because it's like try not to do like any i don't, don't do stuff like anything overly specific but i'll just kind of draw things from mm-hmm. here and there so yeah. And when you, when you do the shirts and stuff like that, like when you did B-side, uh, did they give you any notes on it or did you just go, yeah, I'll make something and you just presented it to them? Like, were there any, like, we want this on a shirt or how, what was um, your process I think the there? Only time, uh, no, uh, I think the only time, uh, there was a, a request, I was like, oh, you're really twisting me up, twisting my arm. <laughs> <laughs> when Steve was like, how about like, uh, cats with headphones on? I was like, Okay, I guess. <laughs> I suppose, <laughs> shucks. Uh, I guess I'll draw some more kitty cats. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but no, I, I, a lot of times it's literally as I'll just, I'll do like, uh, there's um, a couple, like the two latest ones, I just knew there was an anniversary coming up and I just threw, I kind of worked on a thumbnail. I thought it looked kind of neat and I, you know, sent it to Steve and he liked it. So I just gave me, gave me the okay to, you know, finish it up. Yeah, and I was just kind of happy just to do it because, again, I really it's uh, my preferred record shop in town, and and at least he keeps telling me that he likes my stuff, so I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I, so. you just said the thumbnail thing there, and it reminded me of something. So when I was saying you take the thumbnail and then you just draw it again on a larger scale, which is I, I realize. Well, that's how I used to do it, you know, but now what I love to do, you were talking about the flow of it and it made me think of, um, when I do a thumbnail, sometimes I'll look at it and I'm like, oh, I could never recreate cause it was such a small drawing. It was like, oh, that line is just, it bends just right. It has a good, mm-hmm. a good, you know, it just has action to it or something. And what I love doing is taking that and then scanning it or taking a photo of it and then putting it in a digital like uh, GIMP or Photoshop or something and blowing it mm-hmm. up to the size I want to do it and then trying to sketch on top of that so I can try and recreate it. 
It's that's the method I like to do. I just wanted to say that because it made me think of it. <laughs> There's no real rhyme yeah. or reason to me bringing that up. <laughs> but um, but yeah. I've gotten spoiled by that because I used to draw it one and then try to recreate it by the other. But now I'm just like, oh, I'll just use that and cheat, I'll cheat with my own drawing. But you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean it's not cheating if it's your own stuff, right? Exactly. And when you when you uh, get your prints made, so you started doing the markets. And mm-hmm. you started making your own prints. Where do you get those done up at? How do you get your prints made? Um, that's actually one of the luxuries of working with uh, um, just straight black and white. Is mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm going to be unapologetic and say I literally just can just get a lot of times this done at over at like places like FedEx office. I knew it. Because you- <laughs> <laughs> I was just like a bitch. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it it, it uh, it's true because like. Um, with like the line art because it it uh those machines do take uh, uh strathmore bristol board so i work on oh they do and, um i didn't know yeah that. Okay. I, was, I was pleasantly surprised when yeah. i was because i said well i did i looked at the um their weights they have on you can list that when you put your own paper in, and i looked at the weights and i saw it's like oh this this goes up higher than strathmore i can i can just use bristol board on this it's great hmm. so yeah and uh, but I actually use uh, their uh, services quite a bit because um, to kind of put like a my cause my method kind of does work in stages. Um, I do a uh, so like I said, do the thumbnail, then I'll do like a proper like <coughs> rendering, and this is why I like to do the larger scale rendering is because uh, the way I was taught and how I like to follow through is, is I kind of build up. So um, I'll do like a. Uh, basically a over glorified stick figure okay but where i have like your primitive forms like your head pelvis um torso and then just kind of build up that allows me to kind of make like the skeleton for my characters and kind of go for that it helps me uh, pose and figure out any problems like the sketch will have <clears throat> if like the in like the thumbnail of the arms looking weird too long or too big or something like that when i start doing the final uh, penciling i guess stage it would uh i kind of build up from there um so i use like a a blue lead um Mm -hmm. mechanical pencil and then actually what i'll do is i'll actually copy my pencils onto another piece of uh, bristol board Mm -hmm. and i'll lighten the blue and turn it into like a non-photo blue Mm -hmm. and then i ink on top of that so it's I, i like to say it's a kind of more contemporary way of like an old school technique okay using the non-photo blue because then and, uh, when i ink it i can scan it and then in my scans i can uh, through usually through using photoshop i can actually remove all the blue line right and what do you ink with what are you using uh i like uh i like the uh micron pens crisp line that um they're not they work really nicely they don't overly break the bank so when one inevitably breaks because i'm really heavy-handed uh-huh. it's not the end of the world so mm-hmm. it's like out like three bucks so right. um they are nice pens. Four, four, no. I, w- I will they say are, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really I've been really happy with them. Um I've pretty pretty much been using them since high school, I want to say almost. That's when I was introduced to them. Okay. But uh yeah, and <clears throat> like I said, I when I it was like when I saw, found out that you can actually uh through FedEx you can actually print on the Bristol board is even better because that way it's like I can ink on really nice paper, plus like ink on ink, it's just yeah. goes right over it and it's it's wonderful. So, it makes, and, then, and I can't believe that never occurred to me because they print on, they offer cardstock, like they offer a nice thick cardstock that they print stuff on, and it never occurred to me, like, yeah, you can just use Bristol. Man, I can't believe that I'm just learning this now. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, no, yeah. Actually, talking about the inking, um, I think that kind of going way back to our original discussion, like uh, that break I took. Yeah. Is, I think another thing that added to me not finishing thing is I, for a while, I didn't like my finished work. How come? Uh, it was before I got into like cross hatching and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so like everything just kind of flattened out and just any life I had and like the pencils and stuff like that just kind of died. You were just doing like outlines or what was the, uh, yeah, I was just doing like a mix of like line variations and stuff like that. It had like a very much a, um, like a more a much even more animated quality to it, where it just because my stuff already has like a kind of cartoony aspect to it. The um, I was using uh, I was trying to use 
like spot blacks and like line depth or line weight to really push depth and stuff like that. But everything just like I could get some depth in there, but it would just kind of flatten like the characters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of as another thing. And then, uh, you know, when I started doing like the stuff for my living history group, like I started getting into like the cross hatching and it was um, just adding like that 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 curve to it and texture really helped add like that life back into a lot of my work and that's another thing it's like oh i can do this and then it, as i kind of dabbled and stuff like that it gave me a lot of excuses to problem solve and just kind of figure different things out create different textures using that technique and I, that really helped me inspire me to, i guess to get back into it just kind of like oh i can see this now now I'm going to try so I can see how this works on this uniform. Now I'm going to do like a modern scene with, with like wall art on or graffiti or whatever wall art on, on this brick wall. It's like, okay, so how do I just pick that yeah. without it looking like a giant face in the background? And, it was, and just stuff like that I find really kind of helps me keep pushing myself to kind of um, just experiment, try different things. Yeah. So, in yeah. And you had said that you started out when you were doing this and when you had discovered this and putting your art out again, you started with Facebook and then uh, got on Instagram and you eventually got uh, a site that you have now, your website that you mm -hmm. have, and you started doing markets. Now, when you started doing the market, how did you, aside from, you know, get, we got to where you're doing your prints at, but I've done a few markets and, and uh, when I started out, I'm just like, there's a certain skill that you're not aware of when you go to do a market and it's setting up a table. So how <laughs> did you, how did you figure out how to present your stuff? I've seen your table and it's, and it's, it's very nice. Uh, mine was not every time I went to do a market, it was different. Every time I, I went over the top. Then I tried to do like uh, actually very mother fools like where I even had like hand drawn signs and like cutie little, you know, cause I got all the action figures. I'd have them like talking mm -hmm. bubbles, holding on to things and tried to do that. And then I tried to do the minimal one where I only had one table and just set things on it. Hated all of them. How did you decide on what you wanted <laughs> to present for your, uh, your table when you did a market? Um, a lot of it was just, um, uh, my wife and I would go to like different, uh, craft crafty fairs, um, night markets stuff like that and i'd see how what other people were doing and yeah. i'd find it, see other people's like illustration work and stuff like that and i found I'd, especially when i had officially like signed up for my first uh, market i decided i was i was looking at like different uh just how people were setting it up and um i i don't know just something about just having like just because i i have a that kind of really modular like wire rack that kind of stacks together and really can move it around and adjust it accordingly. I found that to be like a really easy thing to set up. And then on top of that, just, I, th I think when I set out to do it, I wanted something that wasn't overly flashy because I really wanted, wanted the art itself to be the thing that people were drawn to. Mm -hmm. And I even, I even drew some stuff from my like, living history backgrounds, like using like the, uh, the kind of wooden crates and I was, fortunate enough to have access to like old, like, uh, coffee and bean bags that I just oh, thought kind yeah, of with my background. Oh, <laughs> neat. Okay. Yeah. So, and I just kind of just had, through, through, and that was more of a very much a last minute thing when I had, like, I had these like wooden, these wooden boxes for like setting up prints. I was like, Oh, I don't want the prints to get damaged just being in these wooden boxes. And I was like, Hey, I got these, uh, got these coffee bags. That'll work. Yeah. And it just sometimes it just kind of worked. Mm -hmm. So, and, but again, try to keep it simple. Nothing okay. over, the, over the top. Yeah. So, And I've tried that and I, I've, d I've done the thing too where I see how other people have it set up and then I try to do it and I'm like, well, this just looks like a pile of garbage that I set up here. But I, <laughs> I don't know why when I try to do it, it's like that looks awful. Uh, maybe I'm just overcritical. Maybe I just think everybody else is better at what they do than I am. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but um, what, what I, I'm my own worst critic. Oh yeah, very much so. I, 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 I'm very I, much guilty of that. Um, th one question though. So if you have these prints and this is actually something I've been trying to find out for a while, this is also another thing I've seen speaking of seeing the way people have things set up at different mm -hmm. markets and things like that. So for prints, I see a lot of the time that they have a backing board and they're inside of a sleeve. Do you do that with yours? Do you have some sort of thing that you put them in? So it's already encapsulated mm -hmm. and 
what do you what do you use for that? I look all over the place and I'll ask people when I see them and they'll be like, I don't know, this isn't mine. We're just selling it here. And I'm like, damn it. You know, <laughs> I want to know where, well, where do people do this? I just kind of started uh, searching online for stuff when I was, again, when I was getting closer to doing the show about a fools, I knew I wanted to have like prints that people could just buy then and there if they wanted to. Yeah. And um, I think the, I think the website I ended up going through was just literally just called like clearbags.com. Really? Okay. Yeah. And they have like all shapes and sizes and then backing boards and stuff like that. And they've been pretty quick about it. You usually get them in like, I think you usually get them in like uh, groupings of like a hundred. Okay. And it just like, self sealing backing uh, bags and then just the backing boards. And I, I keep my sizes pretty s- simple. It's I usually just do like uh, 11 by 14 and 11 by 17. Okay. And I have like all, all the different types, all different types of sizes. So all yeah, right. just clear bag. I found that to work really nicely. The first person that's been able to give me an answer to that and everybody else just goes, ah, search online for it. And I'm like, but I don't know what I'm looking for. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. That's actually yeah, very helpful. <laughs> uh, and then uh, when you did these markets, so uh, is this is this the only place that you sell them or do you actually sell the prints online? You said you had inventory. Like, do you have a cart that you set up or place that you sell them? I, have, I haven't really dived into that. Okay. Like I said, right. I, want, I want to like really, like I said, I want to kind of get my stuff together. Like we, um, we moved um, back in 2020 to where we are now. Okay. And so uh, it's a process. I like yeah. to tell everyone. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's always you. a process. So it's like, I want to get, you know, kind of stuff in order, uh, be able to kind of really have like a separate area to kind of really put everything so I can, you know, if I sell something, whether it be on, I don't know, uh, I know, I think Facebook has a lot of stuff. You can set it up to sell stuff. You can do that. Mm-hmm. I think even on Instagram now too. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's still some people on, on Etsy that do stuff like that. And it's just a matter of, I don't really, again, knowing myself, I don't really want to dive into that because I don't want to fall into that hole of, Oh, I have X, Y, Z to send out. Well, I still need to do X, right? Kind of thing. So I, I just <clears throat> that I, I mean, it's something that I've talked to other artists that you know. Sometimes they decide. Sometimes you just need to kind of do it. Yeah. Kind of get into it, and and I, I agree. It's just a matter of just getting to that part where I feel comfortable just doing it. Yeah. So. Well, and it's also the doing it over time. I mean, it's. Uh, it- you've built up and not that I'm saying like, why aren't you selling your stuff online? It's like, I mean, you've, <laughs> you've clearly been doing stuff and uh, uh, actually building up more and more as the years have gone on and expanded. So, and, and that's what I was just like, I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing some place that you were selling your stuff. Uh, no, well, I, you know. I really, uh, yeah. So hopefully. You know, I'm and selling local is actually a very good thing. I mean, clearly mm-hmm. it, that's what you're doing and that's a wonderful way to go about it too. And you also have a place where you can present it, in public as well. Like you said, they, they've accommodated you at work quite a few times for that and the local markets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the uh, one thing I'd like to know is aside from that, what would you say is the toughest thing about when you decided to start putting yourself out there and, you know, actually publicly displaying your art? Like, what would you say is the toughest thing for you? I don't know. It's, it's like, you know, there's, there's, it seems like there. I don't know if I can really pinpoint one thing that's really hard, be, like early. And that's good, thing. actually. You know, it's not yeah. like saying like what's stopping you. Uh, it's yeah. just definitely like there are things where sometimes it's like, yeah, I wish I didn't have to do this part, or like, oh, this part takes so long, or I wish this part was easier. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing to have no. <laughs> I, I actually kind of <laughs> like that you didn't have it. You're like, I don't know, it seems fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's I, chill. I think I'm other- yeah, well, I think of I think of other artists I know where like sometimes like their hardest thing is like oh I'm just worried that people aren't going to like my stuff and oh for sure when I do and I totally respect and understand that but when I do when I think that was the other thing that when I started getting back into like finishing stuff is or different works is I I got to a point where it's like I'm just going to do I want to do these illustrations and if somebody wants it and thinks it's neat and wants to buy it cool if not I'm just happy that I'm doing it I like that. So, I don't really have like that, that fear of like, you know, please love myself. It's like, I like that I did this. And if someone else enjoys it too. Awesome. Yeah. No. I, I always, I, I, not to the extreme, but I always feel like I have that, um, 
what is it? Uh, the mother from the movie Carrie sort of syndrome. They're going to laugh at you. Or is that from Carrie? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I get that sometimes, but it's also just before I put it out. And then when I put it out, it's like, yeah, who cares? Uh, if they don't like it, they don't have to look at it. But it's yeah. the beforehand where I feel that. Uh, and then it goes okay. away after I put it out. It's yeah, I don't It's it makes me hesitant, but also that kind of makes me excited too, like forcing myself to do something that I'm like, no, stop myself before I do it. And then I do it. And it's just, it's exhilarating to kind of, it's almost like having an inner turmoil, teasing myself sort of fight. But yeah, it's, I, I can't explain it. It's, it's exhilarating, but at the same time, it's also very fearful. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. And uh, so with the, uh, the, markets that you've done and things like that. Are there any projects or things you'd like to mention that you have coming up in the future or things that you are going to try and do that you'd like to tell people about? Um, I mean, I'm going to try applying for the, uh, the maker's market, the various maker's markets going on this year. Okay. And then um, I'll, I'll probably be a, um, uh, participating in the market. I would neighborhood art walk again. I had nice. a lot of fun doing it last year and it's just, Again, hopefully it'll be a little warmer this year. Right. Yeah, it was It was a quick, uh, it turned quickly into cold this year during that market. Yeah. Yeah. At least, hey, at least it didn't rain. They're asking for rain. They're calling for rain. The tr- were you rain, outside so. or were you at least placed inside somewhere? Uh, I set up actually in my driveway. So I ended up, uh, like I had a canopy up and stuff like that. Okay, so you did have something covering you. All right. Yeah, <laughs> if it were going to rain. So I think, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do this year. If I'm going to try setting that up again. So I think, I always enjoyed you know, when I was participating. It was really cool to see other artists like make your spaces. Yeah. When I when I had a chance, so I, I'm not sure if I'll maybe I'll set up the house where we can just have people come inside because people are more comfortable doing stuff like that now. Mm-hmm. That was like the main reason because you know post pandemic stuff. I think a lot more people felt more comfortable keeping it outside. So we'll right. see. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that. You're yeah. right. And then uh, if people wanted to check out more of your work, where would you suggest they do that? Uh, probably the easiest thing would probably just be my, uh, Facebook page, which is, uh, just, uh, CTH Holbot, um, on Facebook. Uh, that's one thing that's nice about my, uh, name and handle, if you were, it's pretty unique. So it pops up pretty quickly, right. which is handy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing the show today. It was so great talking to you Happy. again. Yeah. Likewise. Thanks again. Thanks again.